Welcome back to another Pickled Unscripted. As always, I have with me the talented Matt the Pickled Dragon. Yes. <laughs> and I'm Jack Koya. Um, so today we have an interesting topic for you. We want to talk about Tolkien lore and the rings of power and what is or is not really canon. But before we jump into it, Matt, what are you drinking? I am drinking Kaigen. In a Mizunora cask expression. Japanese whiskey. Very, very nice. Yeah, we got that a few weeks ago. And I really enjoyed that. And then, as uh, any as all you know, I'm actually experimenting with wines lately. So I have a lovely Chardonnay. It is creamy. It's got vanilla and oak and all the lovely things that I love. So here we are. So... To begin with, let's go ahead and talk about the Rings of Power. Ooh. Rings of Power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know how many of our followers actually watch the Rings of Power. I am not going to lie to you guys and tell you I'm a huge fan because I'm not. And I don't. It's just not for me. I really tried. I got about four or five episodes in and said, this is a waste of my time. Yeah. So you know, I'm a, I am a lore fanatic when it comes to Tolkien um, and really, really, most of the the fantasy sci-fi worlds that I love, like I'm a stickler for, you know, the canon and, um, you know, and, and I, I understand that people today, they want to kind of make their mark and reinvent things, but I'm just not down with the whole with the whole, you know, throwing out the, the canon so that you can try to make a name for yourself. Well, not everything needs to be torn down. And I think there's this common misconception uh, with people that they need to tear down the past in order to rebuild for a better tomorrow. Ooh. And that's not really necessary, is it? Not all the time. I mean, sure, there's a lot of things that probably we could do without uh, racism or any of the isms. That'd be nice. Let's throw those. And obes. And obes. Yeah, obes and isms. Let's throw all that crap out. But not necessarily everything from the past needs to be redone, right? Yeah. So we have Rings of Power, and Rings of Power has taken a lot of flack because they deviated so far from the canon. And for any of my our viewers that have watched or have watched even a little bit like me, you guys know what I'm talking about. They re completely reimagined Galadriel. So she's like a completely different person. Not to mention, you've got like Gandalf coming in at the second age, which, okay. And then there's there's the depiction of orcs. Orcs! <laughs> With an X. Yeah, and I think we have all heard Matt and I talk pretty ferociously about the orcs. With an X. Um, and then there's the, you know, adding a bunch of different characters, because they didn't actually have the rights to the word hobbit, um, apparently. Is that correct, Matt? Yeah, they didn't have... they. They didn't have a lot of rights to the, the more mainstream publications. So like they had, they took to use the word Harfoots instead of Hobbits because they didn't have a right to Hobbit, which Harfoot is just a kind of Hobbit. So, yes. and, but you, there again, you like, you have the Gandalf in the second age and, and you essentially have Hobbits in the second age, which they didn't appear till the third age, but you know, everyone I think closely binds hobbits to lord of the rings so it's hard to have it without it which right. yeah and, so. and, you know in amazon's defense they really did have a very limited amount of like source material to work with a lot of this stuff had already kind of been done so it 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 was a little i, I wanted to fit amazon a little bit but at the same time there's like so many other freaking directions they could have gone yeah i i you know it's one thing to say okay we only have access to second age material which is like appendices and you know silmarillion and whatnot um and so let's make some leaps in logic that that makes sense like okay so they're gonna have to try to make a guess at what tolkien meant by x y or z but 
then to actually you know completely redefine characters like Galadriel I think is the most glaring one um and and her interactions with Elrond especially I think they just shared a kiss recently which is kind of weird because uh because Galadriel is Arwen's grandmother I believe yes they are related (laughs) so Elrond made out with Galadriel and that's and that is his daughter's grandma. Oh, his so, baby mama's grandma. His baby mama's mama. <laughs> yeah, it's it's real weird. It's weird. Yeah. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, like, okay, so there, there's a, there's all kinds of of problems with, at least in my opinion. I, you know, everyone's going to have their own opinion. Uh, but in my opinion. There are all kinds of problems with how they are depicting characters in the Lord of the Rings or in the Rings of Power, I should say. So IGN just re- released this article. I'm going to share it with you here, of course. This is what we do. Um, let's see. We're going to move this up here. So as the identity, identity of Ring of Power Stranger is revealed, the, the stranger is Gandalf. Um, a Tolkien professor. Actually, I I understand, or I've been told that he dubbed himself the Tolkien professor. He's a professor that's a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, which is cool, you know. But he insists that Lord of the Rings canon doesn't exist. Um, so we're gonna dive into that for a second, and it says here, warning: there are spoilers, spoilers ahead. Uh, so, uh, we're talking about the season two here, and I think that they, it's, this is directly in relation to, uh, directly in relation to, uh, the, the introduction of the stranger as, as Gandalf, Mm -hmm. uh, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second, but the, the, the article even mentions here that there are significant breaks from canon um etc well this tolkien professor um uh, he is arguing that there is no such thing really as canon in tolkien and this is dr Corey olson don't send any hate his way he's entitled to his opinions and all that he is thing. entitled to his opinion um, yeah we just happen to disagree and that's okay um, dubbed the Tolkien Professor. Now, I've read a number of people say that he dubbed himself the Tolkien Professor, which, okay, whatever. You know, you can call yourself whatever you want. It's kind of silly. but uh, So he essentially says uh, Tolkien himself was always rethinking his world building even after the books were published. Uh, first thing to specify is that there's no such thing really as canon and Tolkien. Tolkien's ideas were ever evolving. Okay. All right. That's interesting thing to say. Well, let me rewind a second. Let me rewind a second. I think it's super cool. I think it's really cool that, that the mythos of Lord of the Rings has scholarly debates, scholarly works, uh, you know, classes at the university level, almost like it's a real history of the world and it, of of planet Earth, really, like it actually mm-hmm. existed, that there's so much scholarly work being done on it. I think that's so cool because, um, you know, just like real history, there are, different interpretations you know they say the winners write history so you always have to be skeptical when you read the histories of a war or you know something that happened and um you know and and with lord of the rings and all of the i mean tolkien was just this voracious writer you know he you know he published lord of the rings and then he continued to write letters and additional works, the unfinished tales and the, um, you know, all the appendices and the many, many books, peoples of middle earth, Morgoth's ring, you know, there's book after book after book he wrote where he just continued to develop this world. And (laughs) 
But he's no. entitled to do that since this is like his world that he's built. Yes, exactly. You know, and I think that's where there's a big swing and a miss with the Tolkien professor here. Because this is Tolkien's world, right? This is this is uh his his baby. If he wants to change it, he can. But the fact is that he's you know, he died. So so in terms of in terms of arguing that there is no canon, well it's it's I think it's a baseless argument only because once Tolkien died, the way the Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, and everything landed, that's that's it, right? I mean, to say that there's no canon, you could say, well, Aragorn was actually working for the Shadow. Here's my theories as to why. And I'm allowed to say that because there's no real canon, you know? Oh, Bree was actually called Pittsburgh because it was in the suburbs. You know, like, like I could make up anything I want if I could find some letter or or, you know, reference to something um, that, that Tolkien may have offhandedly written about. And, you know, and that's that goes to show how much he did write because it was, it is incredibly uh, expansive, the amount of of painstaking work he did on Middle Earth. You know? Well, I'm, one point that I would really like to point out to everybody is, um, you know, once he died, the rights to Lord of the Rings really passed on to his son. And the reason we have not received like a Rings of Power sooner and all this other nonsense is because his son was so protective over this world that his father had created because he knew what could happen if it wasn't protected. You know, some big company could come in and just trash it which is exactly what has happened. And his son died. We looked this up. His son died in 2020, right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, so his son died in 2020. And then shortly after that, we see Lord of the Rings kind of just get trashed. And yeah, unfortunately, that that kind of is the case. But that that leads me to theorize that there is canon. His son knew that. And I definitely do think Tolkien knew that. I mean, I think huh. Tolkien did as well, because yeah. if there wasn't some kind of canon, I don't think his son would have been as protective over the rights as he was. Yeah. And and I think it's worth noting, too, and this kind of leads into the next point, what is that um, this article is kind of obviously kind of a knee-jerk reaction to all of the all of the vitriol and criticism that they've taken for changing so many things. Right. Um, and, and not just this article, but Amazon's been kind of on the defensive for since, since uh, rings of power came out, they've been on the defensive. And mm -hmm. now there's all this talk of canceling it because it's doing so poorly. Uh, but the, the real important thing to note here is that, there are Tolkien writings. Like everyone's so furious about the canon changes. In this case, they're talking about Gandalf in the Second Age. Well, you know, I, I think that you'd found something about that, right? About oh, yeah, about about Gandalf appearing in the Second Age. Would you like me to read the excerpt? Sure. <laughs> That Oleron, as was possible for one of the Mire, had already visited Middle-earth and had become acquainted not only with the Sandarin elves and other deeper in Middle-earth, but also with men, is likely, but nothing is, has yet been said of this, peoples of Middle-earth. Yeah. So, so here, this is from one of the extra books, Peoples of Middle-earth, uh, and the thing you will note is, in case you didn't know, is Oleron was Gandalf. But the 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 big thing to note here is that um, you know Tolkien left a door open to the to having Gandalf appear in the Second Age with this one offhanded sentence. Cool, you know they didn't need to come out and say, well, you know, there's actually no canon. Uh, to, in defense of this, like it sounds like, I mean, it really sounds like a, a stretch, you know, to they say that there's no canon is downright, it's downright silly. They could have just done their research and found something that would have supported. Yeah, them. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that they could have gone with. Um, and and again, you know, Tolkien, yeah, he played with played with the Middle Earth after after the publication of the work. 
but it was his world. It was his right to do it. And, you know, after he died, boom, it, that's it. It's concrete. And I think you made an excellent point where you said, hey, you know, Christopher Tolkien, he knew there was a canon and he, you know, just defended it to his dying breath. And the Rings of Power, I believe, came out of an agreement with with the Tolkien estate through the grand. I think the grandkids, but I could be mistaken. But I think the grandkids had an, an uh, involvement in that. I believe uh, you are correct, but I could be mistaken as well. But I do believe you are correct. That's what I remember. So, so yeah. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that there is no real canon as this professor? actually says or are we kind of right do you guys think we're right that there is a canon and that it belongs to Tolkien and it then and therefore after he died like it became cemented in history upon his death because this this is more or less what we think so what do you guys think why don't you comment like subscribe and let us know below and feel free to also let us know if there's any other topics or books or tabletop games that you would like us to talk about until then Come back and have another round on us.